What's up guys? Got a uh, product review today. This is the One Up uh, bike rack. I'm just gonna unbox it real quick here. And this is the uh, heavy duty uh, single version. And you can see that it is this awesome, you know, beefy, thick aluminum frame as compared to some of the other uh, products on the market here. And it's done up in this really nice kind of uh, clear uh, anodizing, which just looks super cool. Not like the, the black anodizing they have on some of the other uh, one-up racks, and then also what they have on like your Thule or your uh, Kuat or Yakima racks. This is um, looks a little bit different. So I'm gonna get this out of the box and open it up so you can see some, some of the uh, other parts of it, and uh, we'll go from there. Inside the packaging, uh, we have this uh, box. We got some additional parts. Let's see what we got here. A one-handed deal. So these are the security Allen keys that are used to uh, to lock the rack. And you can kind of see here, it's a uh, it's a hex key, but it's got this hollow uh, end to it. And you'll see how that fits in a little bit later. This is how you actually connect the the rack to the receiver hitch in the vehicle. Looks like it comes with a couple of those. And then uh, there's this strap, which is um, Velcro, and it seems like it's kind of cheap, and I'll show you what that's used for in a minute as well. This section here is the, uh, the locking mechanism that attaches the rack to the trailer hitch. And uh, again, the, the, the rack is in the folded position, but I think you'll get a better view of how this works. So you can see inside here, we've got a single bolt and it's got that uh, hex key, uh, but it's got the security pin in the middle, which you know matches up with this option, uh, the security Allen key that you get. Uh, there's two of them that come in the, the bag. And as you can imagine, it fits right in, no problem. When you tighten this, What's happening on this quill, let's call this part the quill, this goes inside the trailer hitch, is there is a little ball. And as you tighten the, you can't see this here, as you, as you tighten this, um, the ball is now protruding. This is way too far out from what you'd normal, normally see in the car, but just to show the example, it protrudes from this flat face and from this bottom face of the, the quill that goes into the receiver, and it uh, through a friction fit, it wedges itself uh, into the receiver and it cannot be removed. You'll notice if you look along this entire piece, there are no through holes for a, uh, a hitch lock. Uh, not only to, to manually put you know, a pin through here and kind of keep it uh, locked in place, but there's also uh, no other secondary mechanism to lock the rack to the car. So theoretically, if somebody had one of these security uh, tools, which I think are probably widely available, I'm not, uh, I don't think you're secure just because, you know, I've got this, this magic tool that came on my kit. I think lots of people could probably find a way to loosen up this, um, this bolt. But uh, aside from the security perspective, this is a really easy way to to get the rack into the car quickly to secure it and uh, to take it off just as quickly. So I, I like this. I think there are gonna be some opportunities to improve the security of locking the rack to the car uh, through some secondary means and I'll show you uh, how that works when I go through the, uh, the custom um, uh, hitch system that I'm gonna have installed on my vehicle. The packaging also has this pretty good uh, quality Super Duty single user guide. You can see it's got a uh, parts list. And uh, the one of the cool things about this rack that, that made me decide to get this versus some of the standard products you see out there, Thule and, and Kuat, is the design is such that if any of these individual pieces were to fail or just you know rust over time, you were talking about some of the bolts, um, you have access to get all these individual parts as, as spares. You don't have to toss the rack or, or try and get service on it. Um, I know that some of the other manufacturers' parts are just really not that serviceable. If you look at some of the designs here, and you actually go to the 1UP site, 
uh, you will see that they sell all these different parts as assemblies. So, you know, let's say you, uh, you needed to get a replacement uh, set of bolts. Um, they have, that's probably not the best example because you can go to Home Depot and buy pretty good quality bolts or McMaster or anything like that. But if you needed to buy any of these individual parts, these, these uh, kind of billet aluminum machined parts, you can get it. And the, uh, the quality of these parts is, is super nice. I and mean, you can see the, the machining is, uh, is just top notch. I like it. I'm very impressed. Another thing that's really impressive from the get-go is the fact that this rack, which can carry, I think it's 50 pound bikes uh, on every individual rack. So you can certainly do e-bikes and it's, it's beefy enough to, to go up to uh, four total bikes with add-ons. This comes in a box that is 30 inches long. It's tiny, 30 inches by, uh, let's say a foot and a half, something like that. Yeah, 14 inches, somewhere around there. And it's crazy how, how well this design is in terms of the folding uh, capacity. If you're gonna store this on your, on your car all the time, great. Uh, it's certainly built to do that, and I think that I'm probably gonna spend a lot of my time with the, uh, the rack installed on the bike. But in the cases that it's not, uh, if I'm going to the airport or something and, and you know, I'm going on a trip and I don't want to leave this rack connected to my bike, this is tiny. This can come off super easy and it can fit in your trunk. And it's, you know, you're not going to have to put all your seats down and, you know, keep your, your kids from being able to sit in the back of the, the car because there's not enough room for the rack and the kids. This thing is so small that it could fold up like this and it would fit uh, pretty much anywhere in the car that you wanted to put it. Uh, I've not seen any other rack that's got that kind of capability. This bar right here, this black bar that you see, is the mechanism for folding and unfolding the, the rack. I'm going to do it at this point as uh, just coming out of the box so you can see how it works just because I can get a, a good close-up on it. But this is a, there's a pretty beefy spring in here and what you do is uh, you basically rock this bar, this black bar back, and you can see it comes loose from these uh, cutouts here. And what you'll do at that point is you can rotate uh, the rack, which is upside down at this point, but you can see it'll rotate uh, open uh, into any of the full upright positions, whether it's holding bikes or if, or if you wanna um, fold it up against the tailgate to, if you don't have a bike on it and you wanna make the least amount of space in your garage, and there's a couple of other positions as well, but to, to actuate that, all you do is, is pull back on this, uh, this bar here. And it's, it's definitely beefy. What I found is when you pull it and then you rotate this, uh, this bracket here, it's got an incredibly smooth, uh, beefy feel. This is not like the kind of clunky uh, Yakima and Thule feels that I've seen on, on all the other racks that I that are available at my local bike store. This is similar to what I've seen in the, uh, the aerospace business uh, with uh, all kinds of uh, camera mount for, uh, for aerial photography and that kind of stuff. This is just super thick, super, um, super strong and rigid and uh, there's, there's like zero wobble. So let's unfold it and I'll show you a little bit more. So here's the rack as it comes out of the box. I've set it up uh, on this mat in my garage here and you can see it is tiny. Uh, this is incredible how such a large and beefy rack can, can be collapsed into a, such a small space. So to, uh, to kind of unfold it, there's a couple of these blue anodized levers here on both sides. And you basically just flip them right on out. And what you'll see that you can do at this point is you can grab one of these racks. Uh oh. Hard to do with one hand ah, and a camera. So the racks kind of slide open. So you can see as I hold this, uh, this piece slides all the way open and uh, grab the other side as well. Ooh. Sorry about the camera work, fighting with it there. And you can see now it's uh, completely open up. And uh, that was easy. I mean, if I weren't holding the camera, and trying to do that at the same time, it would have taken maybe uh, maybe 10 seconds. With the, the, the two tray 
uh, sections extended. I put it back up on the shelf here so I can just show you how the, the mechanism works. Um, so there's a, there's a locking arm that will come up and the bike tires will fit underneath it. And to actually make that happen, you've got these little catches at the bottom that ride along, I think they call this a glide bar. And you can see it's kind of got some teeth in here. So it, um, it's what locks it in place. But to, uh, to open it, I'm gonna pull this section up and then I'm going to uh, open this guy as well. It's not gonna work so hot with me holding the phone. So let's see if I can uh, find a position that works so you can see how it opens. All right, I got my rack installed on the uh, Kia Sorento and I like how it is so compact. You know, being a, a single bike rack uh, it really is quite small when it's it's folded up. And you can see here that uh, the rack has a bunch of reflectors on the outside so that whether it's in the, the upright position or the down position, uh, it, it gives you a little bit more visibility in case, you know, you're, um, you're driving at night and uh, you get a little bit more reflectivity. Rotating the hitch uh, from the stowed position down to the uh, position where you carry the bikes. Again, as we showed before, is just pulling this single bar so it comes out of the uh, the locked position and it just pulls up. And at the same time, you, it's hard to do it in one hand while I'm holding the camera. Yeah, really hard to do while I'm holding the camera. But uh, you just do that, uh, you pull it in position, you'll see it's locked in this sort of uh, halfway position. I'm not exactly certain what this would be used for, um, but it is a standard position that's cut out on the um, on these thick metal pieces here. So it's it's definitely a locked position. But again, to get it to the, the standard position where you put the bike on, just pull it down, lock it in, and you're ready to go. With the trays all the way uh, open, you can see how the larger tires, even in a 29er, I'll put my bike up here in a minute, but you can see there's a lot of space to get the bike in and out of the rack easily, and I'll show you that process now. All right, I got my uh, Santa Cruz Hightower LT. If you haven't seen my review of this, check it out in one of the other videos. But I got it loaded up here on the rack, and you can see that uh, what I did was I opened up the bars to the full open position. This is not locked in right now, and I'll show you the process of actually locking it in, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, there's this ratcheting system we looked at before, and when you pull, or you, you push in this case, the, uh, this part toward the bike, you can actually hear it locking into place. So that's stuck at that position now. You do the same thing on the other side. I'll do this a quick. Locked in, and that's it. That bike is solid, and I can, I can really shake on it. And you see, um, the lateral movement. There's hardly anything. You know, you got to make sure that you get these guys pulled in. Not, you don't have to do it too tightly, but this, uh, this is a very secure way to carry the bike. It's kind of like the quick release type uh, ratcheting, not ratcheting, but quick release mechanisms that you see on the Thule and the uh, Kuat racks. But instead of just having it cover up the, uh, the front wheel and have a strap that goes through the, the bottom uh, of, let's say, your back wheel and one of those uh, ratcheting straps, this seems to be a lot more stable because it has not only a connection point um, at the bottom where it's sitting inside this tray, but all the way up at the top of the wheel, it's holding the wheel from moving laterally as well. Here's a look at what the bike looks like uh, when it's in the installed position. These are 800 mil bars, so that they certainly fit, uh, you know, on this uh, on this rack. There's plenty of clearance. Another cool feature that many of the standard racks have is this kind of tilted away from the bike sorry, tilted away from the car position uh, where you can open up the, the trunk of your car and get into it while the bike's on the rack. It's one of those things if you 
you don't have a rack like this and you've never encountered this situation, it, it might not seem like a big deal, but inevitably, if you don't have this feature and you put the bike on the rack and you get it all strapped in, um, immediately you need to get something out of the trunk. And so it's kind of a pain to actually take the bike off and um, move the rack around so you can open up the trunk. This kind of positioning makes it really easy to, uh, to handle that situation. Here's a perfect configuration of this tilted mode where, uh, where my bike can be out of the way and I can get open the, uh, the trunk and get all the kiddo stuff in the back. So this definitely is awesome. Even if you don't have kids, you know, it's easy to move the, uh, the rack down, open up the trunk and go from there. When you're getting the bike out, uh, all you have to do is uh, release this little red ratchet uh, on one side and then open up the tray and you'll see now I have it to the forward position. The back part is still locked. So at this point, all you need to do is push the bike forward on the tray and it'll come right out. It's super easy. And what I really like about this is there is zero touching of the frame. 100% is uh, contact is with the tires. These are um, 29er tires, 2.4 inch width. So you can see that there's uh, there's contact here at this this point, which keeps the uh, tire in place. And then the uh, the tray is kind of a uh, it's not a 45 degree angle. It's a little bit greater than that. So you can kind of see how the um, the tire sits right inside of that tray, and it's uh, it's wedged in there well. So there's zero chance of frame rubbing or you know cables getting worn. Uh, by, by rubbing up against either the car or the uh, the rack. And the other thing that's worth noting is there's a huge amount of clearance with the cranks. So, you know, you're not gonna have any problem uh, trying to fit the, the bike in a situation where, you know, the cranks only have to be in a certain way so that they're not bumping into the car. Um, I've also noticed that you have the ability to uh, to have the bike stand up and uh, be able to per, uh, perform some basic service uh, on the bike like lubing the, the chain, um, adjusting you know any of your bolts if, if you want to make sure everything's tight before you go out on a ride, uh, checking your pressures and your, and your shock and your, um, your fork and it is at a great height to be able to do that. All right I got this strap installed and you know you can see that the velcro strap goes through the fixed point on my uh, bracket of my car and then it goes around this heavy section of the rack you know i'm not really sure if that would do anything if the overall locking mechanism of the allen uh, the security allen key and the wedge stopped working uh, this seems kind of kind of weird to me they have an otherwise really strong thick metal design and this sort of seems like an afterthought so I'll show you when I get my locking chain exactly how I uh, I found uh, to use a similar kind of strategy but with a much thicker chain my solution for locking the rack to the hitch uh, security wise you know this strap isn't good enough for uh, for making sure that somebody can't remove the rack from the the uh, car. So what I have done is I've bought a lock that will connect this steel plate, which is welded, of course, to the the frame underneath the bumper. And uh, I'm going to have a, a bicycle lock that will go around this uh, very thick piece. Or there's also this other very thick uh, cylinder up here. Um, <clears throat> this this is not going to make sure that it's 100% certain someone can't remove this rack from the car. Certainly this is aluminum and with an angle grinder they could simply uh, cut this whole thing out. It's not going to take that long. This is just to make sure that you keep the uh, the honest people honest and uh, you know make sure that you've got your your insurance policy in a situation where if somebody wanted to get your bike off the rack and they eventually did you'd be covered.